Yep, I'm gonna put the screen up in a minute. Let me know if you can see the screen and hear me. <coughs> Welcome everyone. Beautiful day here in New York. Stuck inside though with COVID as usual. But I'm going to talk to you today about trading. And gosh, what a what a great year to work from home. Talk about talk about good timing. I mean, this is just one of these years where no matter what you do for a living, <laughs> if you're able to work from home, <coughs> excuse me, it is a true, true blessing because it has been a nutty year for many employers and many people uh, trying to get into a groove with their work style. But for me, I've, I've been working from home now for, for so long. I don't know, 12 years now I've been, I've been doing this trading stuff. So, you know, it was just normal work environment for me. For, but a lot of people, you know, now are working from home with their regular jobs and, you know, it's not convenient for people because they don't have all the tools and essentials they need. And the only thing you really need to trade is a computer, a trading platform, and charts, okay? So today I'm gonna to talk about earning six figures a year trading from home, which again is a blessing for many, many people who are experiencing turmoil or uncertainty in their life due to 2020 and COVID. So if you'd like more information after the webinar today, you can feel free to email me at melissa at thestockswoosh.com or if you'd like a trial to the trading room this week, you can email me too or you can call me, I'm here. 929-3200 GAP, or follow me on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, or Skype. So welcome everyone. Today I'm gonna to talk about really the idea of being able to earn a living trading. And I'm saying six figures a year, but honestly you can make so much money in the market. What prevents you from winning versus losing? From making six figures a year to earn, losing six figures a year? First of all, you have to have a strategy that works consistently in the, in the market under any market conditions, whether it's wild, volatile, bullish, or bearish. And second of all, it det it's determined by your risk, okay? But you can't get to a higher risk to be able to earn this kind of money unless you know what to do. So again, it goes back to the original thing, it goes back to the strategy, it goes back to understanding why you're trading and what you're doing. As crazy as it sounds, because I've been stuck inside, you know, for the majority of the year, I feel like I've, I've, I've never traded more than any other year that I have this year because I basically am here. And it's what's funny because I typically tend not to trade in the afternoons, but I have found myself seeing options trades in the afternoon. I even called something late today after three o'clock, which is unusual. So because I'm here, you know, I'm seeing a lot more opportunities in the market. And so whether you want to work part-time or full-time as a trader, you can do it whatever your schedule works for you. But really, it's only a Monday through Friday job. Market's closed on the weekends. I don't trade the after hours, okay? Even if I'm in an option, you can't trade options after four o'clock. So I'm sticking with just talking today about doing my strategy on gaps. We will discuss options and we will discuss day trades. But the overall strategy I do, whether you want to do options, day trades, or both, you can use to make whatever kind of money you want to, that's determined by the size of your account. Now, a lot of people were saying to me, well, how can you trade your strategy with a small account? The answer is yes. I see Gala had in here. Some people go off the rails a little bit when they, when they have to be structured like that. I really think it's not a big deal as long as you're following structure. And, I, and Galahad, I hope when you come back, you realize that. I'm gonna tell you a story about a guy right now, he's not here tonight, but he's doing the Gap Options course, which is this Thursday. He has a small account, okay? He does not have a retail account, he's not over the 25,000. So if you, he's only doing options. If you do options, you can't day trade options in and out, in and out, without 25,000 or more, okay, at a broker. But anyways, this guy has not taken any class that I've ever had yet. <laughs> He's not done any one of my classes yet. He signed up for the Gap Options course, which is this Thursday, but it has you get the, the letter free, the newsletter free for a month. So he's been on the letter for the last couple of weeks. He's doing the class this, this Thursday, and he has a small account. He's trying to build it up. He's trying to build it up. He's been calling me. He's been answering, asking me questions all the time. He's texted me probably every single day. Anyways, he is almost over the 25,000 threshold and, he, and, and, and he's, he's been with me less than a month. 
He's a great, and he hasn't done the class yet. Okay, he's going to do a lot better after he does the class this Thursday. I'll tell you that. He's made some mistakes. He's admitted he has. He's done some things that that he really shouldn't do. But the reality is, it just goes to show you, if you have somebody that's a great mentor and giving great calls, which I which I do, you can make money even if you don't know what you're doing really. So, but the benefit of trading and doing it on your own is learning the information and also getting the trades. And again, he admits he made some mistakes on his own uh, when he did some things that he didn't talk to me about first. And now he's learning as he's going along. So you can take a small account, you can build it up to 25,000. You could take a $25,000 account and build it up to 100,000. There's a trader that started out with 100 grand this year. It's She's almost up to half a million dollars. She made 400 grand just doing options with me in the first six months of the year. Now, I don't, I haven't talked to her to see where her, her account is in September, but she's up so much in the first half of the year that um, there's no way she's not gonna have a huge end to 2020. We only have, you know, three and a half months left. And part of that is earning season. So I think that anybody can do this, but if you're not, if actually I see Erwin here too. Erwin, I haven't seen you in years, years. I thought you disappeared, Erwin. See some old timers here today. If, if you're somebody that you really have this desire to make a lot of money, trust me, I get it. I totally, totally get it. I'm, I'm thinking that way in a way different scale than, than some of you are. But the philosophy of how we were thinking is the same in the sense that everybody wants more. Everyone wants to make more, earn more, have more. Listen, I get it, okay? I'm thinking in a different way than some of you, but still same philosophy where I have dreams and goals as well. On Saturday, I went to look at apartments. I was looking at $15 million apartments. So I have my goals, okay? You have your goals. Your goal may be to get a $5,000 account up to $25,000. My goal is to buy a, a huge apartment in New York because we're in a downturn here and this market's gonna crash in the next 12 months probably in New York City. And I wanna be able to take advantage of that as a person that lives here. So we all are, are doing our own thing. So don't think you're, you're not alone. You know, you think, oh my God, I, just, I can't even, how am I ever gonna get there? You have to think of it like a process, okay? You, you, you take it as it comes. You take it on a Monday, take it on a Tuesday, take it on a Wednesday. Like today, we didn't do any trades today. There was nothing to do. Now, if you traded today when there wasn't anything good that met my strategy, then guess what? You probably would have lost. What I said today played out in reference to the market. We'll talk about it at the end. Um, I have a specific way of reading this market and I'll share that with you at the end of the webinar. But the reality is that there's days that you don't train. And if, you were, if you're pushing the envelope too much, you're gonna trip and fall over. And this new guy that I've been talking to you about, his name is Julio, he, I've been talking to him and coaching him through this, he gets it. He's starting to get it now. Like I said, listen, you're gonna get there. You're gonna get over the 25,000, but if you do stupid stuff, you're, you're gonna hurt yourself. I said, you're gonna get there. He said, well, when? I said, well, I don't know. Whenever you get there, you get there, but know that you're gonna get there. Do you know what I'm saying? If you don't have the mindset that you know that you're gonna be able to make six figures a year trading, then just know that, like whether you can make it there by October 1st, by you know December 1st, who cares? If you know that you can do it, however long it takes is however long it's gonna take. Do you know what I'm saying? So this is kind of how I, I do things with myself. I say, this is my goal. I know I can make it happen. I see myself in this apartment or whatever it is, like I know I'm gonna get there and I know every single thing I have to do along the way to make it happen. Even though I, I'm not there right now, I know exactly what I have to do and I know that I'm gonna get there. And that is how you have to look at your trading, okay? Or any, any big goal that you have in life that seems huge, okay? So anyways, let's get into it. And any questions, you can just write them in the room. I see some people signing in late. So why do people find day trading so hard? There are many, many reasons. However, one big one is a lack of focus and a lack of clarity. This is one thing I'm very good at. I'm very good at focusing down and honing in on usually one pick, one pick a day I try to do, and then clarity about the market. Traders are often second guessing themselves. Should I go long? Should I short? Should I do anything today? Should I do nothing? You shouldn't second guess yourself because it really hurts your confidence level. And that's just a sidebar. You need conviction to trade and you need conviction to make money. And, and I gotta be honest with you, many people that I talk to that are interested in trading don't have confidence and don't have conviction. You can gain the conviction coming to me. By doing the class, you get the conviction because you say, well, this makes sense what she's saying. 
I can get behind this strategy. I get it now. It makes sense. And that conviction then helps your confidence then to take risk. Because the only way that you can make money in the market is when you risk money. And that, that's just the way you have to do it. And so if you're risking $500 or $1,000, you really do need to have some level of confidence and conviction behind what you're doing in order to make money, okay? The conviction comes from the knowledge because without that, you won't be successful. So you have to have the conviction, you have to have the confidence, and you need to know what to focus on. So why is conviction really important? And what is it? Conviction is a strong, strong belief. And getting back to what I was saying earlier, a belief in, in the fact that you know that you can do it. You know that this goal that you have to trade for a living and make six figures a year is something that you can do. You believe. Kathy, I'm seeing you writing in the room. Can everybody hear me? Just give me a heads up that you can hear me. I don't know if there's any hot com issues, but I'm seeing some, some weird notes in the room for you, some stars and stuff. I don't get. Okay. All right. So you can hear me. Because I know we lost we lost connection that one thing. Okay, very good. Um, getting back to what I was saying, conviction is a strong, strong belief. I believe, I believe that I can do this. Um, it's like when you get sick. Okay, you get sick and you're and you're sick and you say, I know that I'm going to get better. I'm going to take this antibiotic and I'm going to get over this. I'm going to take all my vitamins. I'm going to go to bed early. It's it's whatever thing you're determined to do. Your determination could be pinpointed to something small or your determination could be pinpointed into something big. We all have small goals, we have medium goals, and we have big goals, okay? A small goal could be getting up at five o'clock tomorrow morning to go exercise. A medium goal could be losing 10 pounds before the end of the year. And a big goal could be something like learning how to trade and make six, making six figures a year and changing careers. So it's good to, to see on a scale where this goal is as far as something in your life. Is, is it small, is it medium, is it large? And I call it chunking it out, but you get to the large goal by taking a small goal, achieving that, getting the results from the small goal, then having the medium goal, and then getting the results from the medium goal, and then getting the results to the bigger goal. So if the bigger goal is that you wanna earn a living trading and make you know 100 grand a year, 200 grand a year, Take it by a small goal, which is learning a strategy that consistently makes you green. Even if it's $25 a day you make, you're green, 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 green. You have a lot of wins and very few losses. So that could be a small goal. A medium goal could be, again, taking something like Julio's account, where you're trying to get a $5,000 account up to a $25,000 account. That's a medium goal, okay? So, and then after you get the account up to the $25,000, then you're on your way to making an average of $1,000 a day. So you can go up that scale by setting your goals that way. And I think it's a lot easier too for people to get their head around it because when they do, then if they're, if they're at zero and they're trying to get 1,000, if they're, if they're at point zero, they're losing money, they don't have a strategy, they don't have a lot of cash, okay? And they're trying to you know, get to the end goal, which you know is to just trade for a living, and be able to pay all your bills with that and then have money left over to save, you know, that sometimes is like too big of a leap for people to get through their head. There's many, many little goals in between. There's the baby ones, the small ones, the medium ones. Do you understand what I'm saying? So allow yourself to go up the ladder of that because I think it helps your confidence too. You can say, well, I, got, I did this today. I got out of bed at 5 a.m. and I went and I exercised, so I did cardio for an hour. That's a small step towards the next step or whatever it is. You understand what I'm saying? Anyways, talking about conviction and what I'm seeing here with this, this was a chart that we did. We'll go over this trade. I think it, I think my assistant put this in here. This was CN. CN was a gap. Now, I'm just gonna briefly go over here with you. My strategy is on gaps. Whether I do day trains or whether I do options, I do calls and puts and options and we go short and we go long in in stocks this is a day chart okay this closed up here at 60 dollars. boom open in the morning down here around 46 and change so what is a gap a gap is a difference between the close and the open okay so the stock up here the cn this was earnings closed up here at 60 dollars and open what like 14 bucks under where it closed so a gap is a difference between the close and the open. So the market closes at four o'clock, CN closed at four o'clock, it opened the next day down here, lower, 
okay? So you have bearish gaps, which is what this is, where the stock opens lower than it closed. You also have bullish gaps, which happened here the day before. This closed here around 58 and change. This opened up here around 59 and change. So this opened higher. Closed at 4 o'clock at 9.30. It was higher, rallied up. Okay? So this is a bullish gap. This is a bearish gap. We shorted this. And I had a lot of conviction in this. We did this trade. And then actually it continued. Just want to show you here. This is three days into it. This drop down here um, ended up really going nicely. You could have done a swing trade in this or even an option continuation. Here is another day chart. I'm going to show you some more gaps in this chart. <coughs> this is Netflix. I had a lot of conviction Netflix was going to move higher. I was watching it, watching it, watching it, watching it, watching it. And then on this morning here, I saw that it was going to go. I actually didn't know it was going to go this big, but I saw that it was going to rally. This was a bullish gap. This closed here, gapped up. And then this is all buying that came in. This was a massive move that happened in the day. It was over $40 move on the day in one day for Netflix. This is a big bar. So we did calls in this. So we, we, we basically bought the stock moving higher in an option, and it was a very nice trade. Galahad, you would have loved this trade. This would have been something you would have loved. That was a really great option move. But it, I had conviction that this was higher Okay, you could have gone long and as a day trade, or you could have bought the calls. Okay, so that was a nice one there. Any questions here so far? Anyways, when you are, when you are trading, okay, when you're day trading, you are in and out and flat by four o'clock. When you are doing options, the amount of risk you have on is the set risk. That's it. If you risk $1,000, you can't lose any more than that in an option. So basically, you're paying the cost of the option. So you can't lose any more than that. And I think a lot of traders that are doing swing trades, and even some of these people that are trading on this Robinhood now, which has become so popular, people are taking stuff, they're holding it, and then it's turning upside down for them overnight. And their risk then is essentially more than they even have in their account, which can be very, very scary for people, okay? So when you're day trading, you're in, you're out. And when you're doing options, hopefully you're in and out in 24 to 48 hours too. Now, sometimes I'll call an option trade and we're in it longer than that because it hasn't moved yet. But ideally, the best trades that I call work within 24 to 48 hours, even for the options. And again, the day trades were in and out. But I, I tend to look at something where if I risk one amount, then I'm turning it over one amount. Now, I will get out of something between 50% and 100% for an option risk. But like, for example, if you're risking $200 in a day trade, your goal should be $200. If you're risking $500 in an option, your goal should be $500. I tend to day trade in the morning in the first half hour of the day. I will do options throughout the day, but most of them are in the morning. Most of the trades I send in the pre-market before the open, and sometimes I'll call a late one um like i did today but you know when when people look at day trading and again you can day trade stocks you can day trade options this is this is not investing you're not buying and holding a lot of people are wanting to to buy and hold this tesla right now they think it's higher the stock split it dropped off now people are getting excited about that again I, you know this is not long-term investing what we do this this gap strategy is looking at something and determining where the momentum is going to come in. And as an active trader, you are playing the momentum. You're not investing in this stock forever and ever and ever and ever and ever, okay? You are going into the stock or the market, sometimes we do ETFs, you're trading it however you're trading it, on margin as an equity trade or as an option, which is not on margin. You're pulling money out of that stock by trading the momentum. And how do I look at it? I look at the gap. And then I determine if the stock's going to move higher or lower based on the actual gap. That is the strategy. And I'll talk about that a little more later, but that is what I figure out in the pre-market. But you're, you're just getting the move, like that Netflix, the rally, okay, like the CN, like the drop. You play the momentum. That's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for the momentum. I'm predicting the momentum is going to come into the gap. 
a basically follow through. Okay. Any questions here so far? Anyways, getting back to what I was talking about, about small goals, breaking it down. If it's too cumbersome for you to think about an annual goal, break it down per week, break it down per day, break it down per month, okay? So, you know, if you rate, if you make $1,000 approximately a day, that's, you know, 5,200 a week. That's gonna take you to 250 a year. Now, some days you might lose, or some days you may not trade at all like today, but guess what? Some days you may make three grand in a trade. So it's on average. And this is why you have to look at it pinpoint by pinpoint. And again, if it helps you to look at a weekly goal, sometimes you get a big trade, you can make your whole goal for the week in one day. We've done that a million times. Like Netflix would have done that. In fact, that would have made your goal really for the month. But if you look at it like that, by taking nibbles out of it, bites and chunking it, it really helps you, I think, to get to that point. Anyways, this was back in the Netflix. And here again is a daily chart. You can see this figure here. This date was the 26th when it had this beautiful gap up. Stock closed here, gapped up. I don't think anybody, including me, thought that it would go that big, that fast, like it did. And we ended up doing several, several option strikes in it. But on Wednesday morning, right before the open, I called the calls on Netflix. In fact, I first called the 490s. This flew. So they cost $17 for one. Five contracts was a cost of $8,500. And the stock ran up and, and it was a beautiful trade to 58. So this one trade, you could have made 20,500, which was a 241% return on investment if you had five contracts. Now, what if you got one? What if you paid $1,700? But one contract, guess what? You still would have had a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful trade. That still would have been 241% return on investment. Because at the end of the day, even if you only did one contract, it was still a big trade. So again, you see how, and actually this was one of the ones that Julio did that helped him get his account up this in the last couple of weeks. The whether, whether you did one, whether you did five, again, you do what you can afford. Does everybody see this here? I mean, so again, you're taking a train and you know, even if you did one, you made over three grand. It's a really, really nice, nice return on investment in one trade. And it just so happened to go on that one particular day. Now, that was an option. I also did day trades. This was a day trade that we did. This was TIFF, okay? TIFF was a bearish gap. That previous one was a bullish gap. So this closed here up here around 121 and change. This was a news, it was an earnings. Open in the morning, fell. We shorted this in the tail. It was a really nice move. We had a good exit. Share size was 2,500. Stop was 110.70. Entry was 109.60. Boom. We pulled almost a buck out of it. Actually ended up going all the way, almost all the way down to 108. Um, you could have had a better exit on this actually. Profit was 2,125. This was a nice move. Again, what if you took half the size? Then if you only took 1,200, 1,300 shares, you still would have made over a thousand bucks. So we just shorted this tail, boom, we got out, done. In fact, it lifted. So this was a really nice, quick, fast day trade we did in the morning, and we were out, I think, by 10, 15-ish. We were, we were out of this. So this was a trade that you would have taken on margin. The options are not on margin, you only pay the cost. Okay, any questions here so far? So again, is it possible to make six figures a year trading? Yes. Well, your risk should be approximately, I'd say around $1,000 a trade. And that's across the board, whether you're doing day trades or options, if you want to hit these numbers. But you also have to have more winners than losers. So this is the important piece of having somebody, again, that's guiding you and mentoring you I call the live trades in the day trading room and the options newsletters are emailed to you. You take the trade once you get the email. So having someone that has a keen insight on what's going on in the market, and again, I've been doing this a long time, definitely, definitely helps you. And if you have questions to call and ask me, like I was telling you, like Julio has been doing, it helps you to determine, um, you know, whether the market's gonna work against you, whether the market's gonna work in your favor, 
but every single thing I do is based on the Golden Gap system. It's a system that I created um, when I first started to trade in 2008, and then it took me about three years to develop it. It's how I read the market. It's how I can determine if a stock is going to sell off or if a stock is going to get bought. It's really based on institutional money that I'm reading in the chart. And we'll just quickly look here at the QQQs. So the market here had a nice run up, ran up and made brand new all time highs in August. Then we dropped on down and we had a couple of nice shorts in the last you know, two weeks that we've done in the market that have really gone very nicely. Previously, though, we did have a call, and this was back Monday, August 1st. In fact, I'll show you where this is. I called the 296 QQQs. So this was the 31st. And again, it doesn't, this doesn't even look like much, but the market was breaking out. So it broke out and then went poof, and there it went. So again, called this really pretty much right where it was trading at. Actually, no, this was in the morning. I saw it was going to run up to the 296, and then it popped. So this, again, just a quick trade. You're in in a day or two, and you're out. Could have got out of it here, could have got out of it here. Trade was green even the day that I called it, okay? But anyways, I called this in the afternoon on the Monday, gapped up the next day, gapped up the next day. Kosh was pretty cheap for the market, 325. Contracts was 25, risk, this is an advanced risk, was 81.25, sold at seven. So guess what? You could have bought one for $325 and sold it for seven bucks and then turned it over more than 300 bucks, 115%. Just, you know, again, in one day where you take it and you can get out or you could have held a little more. So this is the market moving higher from the gap ups. Market closed here, gapped up. Called the trade in the afternoon. I saw the market was going to gap up the next day. Market closed here, gapped up. Again, we rallied and held. Market closed here, gapped up. So the gap ups were taking the market higher. They were getting bought. Sometimes gap ups move higher. Sometimes they fall. Here's one that's the opposite. And this is, again, why you have to learn the strategy and know what to do. This closed here, gapped up, fell, sold off. This closed here, gapped up, fell, sold off. So here's two gap ups that sold off. Here's two gap ups that got rallied. So again, you can't go long every gap up, just like you can't short every gap down and vice versa. I know a lot of people are finding the market really tricky these days. Anyways, this was a nice trade. Very cheap for this market. I mean, this was just a great price. Um, again, 8125 investment, 9375 profit. And if you have the size of account that you can trade these kinds of positions, I mean, it's a, it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. This is Boeing. Oh, this has been basing out for so long. We're waiting and waiting for the drop in this and the next earnings. But on September 1st, I called a put in Boeing called the 170 puts. Again, dirt cheap, three bucks. You could have bought two for $600. You could have bought one for 300. You do not need a big account for this. You don't even need a margin account to trade options. Again, nice profit in here. 25 contracts, cost is three. 250 was your profit, 62.50, boom. Now let's go look at the September 1st. I call this in the pre-market in the morning. This is a put, so this is a short. This little guy in here, closed here, open, gap down, rally, dropped. Here's the push. So this one actually did not go the first day, lifted and then dropped. See where the sell-off is? Here's the sell-off. So people were buying this in here. We were short it. Trade was down, down if you took it until it went. And then it went poop and it went. Nice read on that. And there were people that were long, but it was a short. Okay. So again, just, just a trade. Whether you do options or whether you do day trades, it's this idea of looking at the gap and reading it and i do that with my system now this is walmart this is this is still pretty strong but we haven't done anything since this one this was september 1st i called calls the 150 calls in walmart cost was a dollar 70 sold at three profit was 58.50 again beautiful trade so you could have bought two spent a little over 300 bucks you could have bought one for 170 bucks sold it for three 
So I did it on September 1st, it's in the afternoon here. I saw this would continue. I wish I'd done this earlier, but I didn't catch it in the morning. But it had the push up, had the pop, went over the strike. It was a 150 strike. Again, I knew it was still higher. Boom, gapped up over the 150. And you just take it and you're out. Doop. Nice train. This was Walmart. This is still strong. Here was today's move in this. That was an option too. Any questions? So we talked about bullish gaps. We talked about bearish gaps. I do the bearish gap class usually once a month. The bullish gap class I'm doing this weekend, I only do that about once a year. Uh, we mostly, mostly do bearish gaps, to be honest with you. But the bullish gap class is different than the bearish gap class. And it's funny because I think most of the options we've done in 2020 actually are bullish gaps. Um, but I mean, I'd have to count them to see. But that's something that if you want to do options, I'd say the bullish class would really be for you to be interested in because we mostly do uh, shorts in the day trading room. But as far as someone that has these set goals like we talked about and is trying to get there, key point number one is having a good strategy. And key point number two then is taking the right size in order to make the profit that, you're, that you want to achieve for your goals. You have to have the right size account to do that. You cannot risk more than you can afford. I had another person, he, he was new. He risked his whole account in one trade. That's a no-no, okay? That is not a good idea. Um, and again, that's why it is important to learn. Now, that's, I think, is a little bit of common sense where you should know not to do that. Luckily, it was a, it was a trade in the newsletter. The, the trade worked. And, but he knew not to do that again. So I think a lot of people just don't understand sizing and how important it is for the consistency and the sizing. If you take 10 trades a week, okay, or if you take five, say you take one trade a day for over a five-day period, you have to have a similar risk on every trade you take. You can't have one trade be 500, one trade be 2,000, one trade be 7,000, one trade be 2,000. You're, you're, you're not going to see, you're not going to know even if you're following the strategy right, okay? Because you're, you'll be too all over the place. Does that make sense? I know this is such a simple concept, but it's funny. A lot of traders are, are look, taking different risks all the time, and you just can't do that. And particularly with options. I would say the risk is different on some of the ones that we do. Like something like Amazon here, we're gonna look at this. This is more expensive to do as an option. So this may not meet your parameters to be able to trade it, okay? This had a rally, this made new highs, this fell off a planet then with the rest of the market in the last week. Now let's go back and look here where we went long this. On that same day, on September 1st, when I knew the market was higher too in the afternoon and that it would gap up the following day, we went long Amazon. It was the 3,500 calls. Again, this was kind of pricey, but, but for Amazon, this was right in the range. $36.50 for one contract. So two was $7,300, sold at $64. Profit was $5,500. Return on investment is 75%. Really, 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 really just quick move up, take it out. And here was that date. So here was the first. Here's the pop up. Poof. Over the strike. You can get out of it. You're up. Okay, and those days where you take a trade and you get up in the morning and you know that you're up, that the trade is through the strike from the gap, where the gap is continuing, whether the gap's continuing higher or lower, are beautiful, beautiful days to get up in the morning. Galahad, you remember those. You get up and you know you're going to be up money as soon as the market opens. You can see it. You can feel it. It's a great feeling, and it's a great way to start the day. So that was one of those days. Google was another one of these ones here. Again, this one really had a nice breakout. This was, I call the 1660 call, same day, okay? This had the bigger of the moves, broke out and made new highs. Cost was 16 a contract, six contracts, risk is 9,600, sold at 62. We'll go back and look at the chart. Profit, 288% return investment. This is one of my favorites. Usually I'm stuck on something where I say, this is really what I'm on, like watch this one or whatever. Profit was 27,600. We'll go back over here. And look again, this was this exact same day that I saw the market and everything else was up the following day. We closed here, called the trade in the afternoon, poof, got up in the morning. This was through the strike, above the strike, rallied, broke out, ran over, hit through every dream target. I thought 1700, ran up to 1720, 1725, a beautiful trade. And of course you would get out, 
okay? Again, trading is not investing. You're not holding it forever. You're taking the trade. You're making the money. You could have got out in the morning here. Actually, you could have got out. You could have got out earlier if you wanted to. But it was higher. And this is a gap up. And it closed here and gapped up. And then it got bought. Okay? So I get up in the morning and I, and I look at this stuff. And I try to determine if the stock's going to move higher or lower using the 26-point rating system that I developed over that three-year period. I use that system to rate the gap, and that is how I make the trade calls. And that is what you would come and learn from me if you want to learn what I do, okay? You, you, would, you would rate the gaps yourself, okay? Or then you'd see what I see to be able to determine the direction, and then you can do it yourself as well. That was a really nice breakout in Google. And then this was the SPY. Again, closed here. Here's the breakout in that. Again, this one was September 2nd. Called this one in the morning, the 356 calls. And it wasn't, it wasn't even too late, to be honest. Cost was 275, which is cheap for the market. 30 contracts, risk is 82.50, sold at 525, profit 7,500. Return on investment, 91%. Let's take a look at the gap. And again, you would get these trades if you're on the newsletter list. Closed here, gapped up, called it in the morning here. Boom, went up. Nice trade. Again, you can day trade options. Like you could just do them. But per personally, I like to do both. Because when we do the day trades, I know where I'm at by the end of the day. I always know. And then if sometimes you go to bed an option, you don't know you're in it. But sometimes you get up in the morning, you're up a lot. That's nice about the options. So I like them both. I really like day trades and I really like options. And I think it gives a good mix. And it allows you to get those bigger moves doing the options, you know, with just having the cost on of not owning the stock like in a swing trade. And then the day trades, you can, you can, we're more consistently booking money, I think, in the day trades because I don't have options trades every day. Now, some days when I see something's going to happen, like that day in the September 1st day, I'll call them in a, in a, in a group. But I may not necessarily do an option trade every day, but some days that I might call five, six, seven. So I like the idea of being able to do something every day as long as there are good gaps to do. So that's why I like combining the day trades with the options. Any, any questions here from anyone? Okay. Quiet group here today. So let's talk about financial freedom. Whew, this is a big on everybody's mind this year. For most, it means having enough money stashed away they can live off the interest. Or not only that, they can live wherever they want in the world. If you're super duper wealthy, guess what? You wouldn't have put up with some of these restrictions if some of these states did for COVID. You would have packed your bags and been off living in an island, doing whatever you please, wearing a mask or not wearing a mask. Can you imagine? And that is what a lot of wealthy people did and are still doing this year. So, I mean, when you think about it and you think about the freedom that having an enormous amount of money um, has, not only can you buy nice things when you have a lot of money, you also have freedom. And that is such an important piece of it. But guess what? When you work for yourself, you have a lot of freedom. But how are you going to do it? Okay. When you train, you work for yourself, but you have to be a disciplined boss. Again, you can't risk your whole account in one trade because if that trade would lose, then guess what? You'd have no money to trade with the next day. So you have to say, I will take it step by step by step. I will take it seriously too and learn what to do in order to be successful. And that's an important part of it. And for a lot of people, they also don't want to work 40 hours a week. While we're doing this COVID thing and people are working from Zoom and doing Zoom meetings, I think some people have become more productive uh, through home working and some people have become less productive. Now, I don't know which of the categories you people here fit, but I've noticed just speaking from friends, I can tell some people are less productive, some people are more. So it's very interesting as an observer. For me, I'm a very driven person. So I've always been very productive working from home and working for myself. But you know, when you're doing this trading thing, you don't have to sit all day from 9.30 to 4. You could just trade the first half an hour and be done. If you're one of those people that you don't want to work eight hours a day or six and a half, then just, then just trade the morning. Just trade the morning, get whatever your move you have and be done with it. If you know that you can't sit at a computer for six and a half hours a day, you don't need to. The day trades we do were usually done in the first 30 minutes 
And the options, like I said, even if I call one late in the day, you put the trade on and you take it overnight into the next day. Okay, thanks, Kathy. But anyways, you know, this is a good time for people to think about learning more about trading because if you are working from home, you have the time and energy to do it while doing your other job. And I think a lot of people are trying to figure out other ways to make money during this time where they may be on, a, you know, a, a, in a situation where they're like, well, I thought my future was going to be this. Now I don't know if that's going to be my future. And I realize that I have to learn a different career. So there's a lot of things going on in people's minds right now. And then, like I said earlier at the beginning, the idea of working from home, which a lot of people may never have thought was possible. And now people are like, you know what? I really do want a job from home. Eventually, a lot of these companies are going to send their employees back to the office and back to work. It may not be 2020, but I think people are going to have a hard time going from working from home back to the office if it's not something they want to do. But you have time. You have time to learn how to do this from home. And again, many businesses, at least here in New York, are telling, have already told their employees they don't have to come back till June or July of 2021. So, you know, if you have the ability to trade and do your job from home, you can transition, which I think is the best possibility for people if they want to trade for a career because you shouldn't quit your job and just do this without knowing what to do and having any clue what to do. It's a good idea to do two things at once until you make the money that you know that you can sustain yourself with before quitting your job. And when I was doing it, I worked basically my mortgage job and taught myself how to train until I, until I was able to teach myself how to train. And like I said, it took about three years to figure out the entire system that I, that I do right now. But it is totally possible to do this. You have to have a strategy that works, that's number one. It doesn't matter if your account's small or big. And number two, then, you have to risk the amount that you want to achieve the results that you desire, which may be different for every person, okay? Some people do not need 100 grand a year to live on. Some people can live on 50. Some people can't live on 100. Some people need 200, okay? And then some people are very aspirational and they have, uh, you know, very lofty goals. And again, I'm right there with you. Um, you just keep working towards them and you will get there. But if you want to just do the day trading, you day trade in the morning in the first half an hour, hour of the day. Between 9.30 and 10.30, you would be in the trading room with me if you want to focus on the day trading. Um, and if you want to do the options, then you're not in the room. You're just getting the trades to your email. You can be really anywhere and take the trades for that. So the benefits of trading is that you work your own hours. Okay. And again, you can take off when you want. And obviously, the unlimited income potential, which is extremely important, and particularly in these times. You have to remember, though, it is chunking it out. It's, it's just getting the momentum, you're out. Getting the move, you're out. Uh, Google's another good example of that chart where it had that breakout. You, you take it, you're out. Take it, out. Take it, book it, okay? Sometimes we get trades really two piggy targets, I call them, or they'll go so big on the first day that every single person is out, like the Netflix. But I mean, to, to most trades, we just have you know normal exits, and you get the momentum and you're out, and it's very difficult to time the exact top of a long or the bottom of a short. But I think you know one of the reasons people love trades like that, Netflix, is because it goes so big on that very particular day that obviously everybody would be out. Like nobody would hold that you know overnight after that. But one of the things that I do think that it's important, going back to the confidence and conviction idea, is knowing that you want to do this, having the commitment to do it. It does take commitment to get up early in the morning, study your charts, go through the ratings, do it. It takes commitment to do my class. It's an entire weekend. You're giving up your weekend, 9 to 5 Eastern time. And also the cost. My class is seven grand. So there's a commitment to doing it. So you really have to want to do this. You really have to be serious about it. I was extremely serious about trading when I started doing it. I had no idea it was going to take me years to figure it out. When I look back and I think about if, what, if someone had told me it was going to take you this long to do it and it cost you this much money and take you this long, if I had the choice, would I have said yes? I, don't, I can't say. But once I was involved with it, once I was in the thick of it, then I felt like I couldn't turn back. And the only way that I was gonna, I was gonna be able to, to, to proceed was to just keep going. Do you know what I mean? So it's kind of like once you're, it's like, it's, like, it's like if you're crawling, it's like if you're crawling out of a cave, 
<laughs> and and the back part of the cave has collapsed. You can't go back. If you go back, you ain't gonna get out the same way. Do you know what I'm saying? It's like you're stuck in a cave, and the only way to get out is to keep going. So if you're at that place in your training where you're losing and you're not doing well, I mean, what are your choices? You can't go back. It's you just gotta keep going forward. And that does take a certain level of commitment, especially if you're in the cave and you're super duper tired, or you spent a lot of money in other classes, or you lost money in the market and you don't know how you can keep going to get out to the fresh air. You gotta keep going. You have no choice if you really wanna make it. And I think that the, there's a lot of looky loos out there. They come to my webinars. I've talked to them for years. I've, been, I've had the stock switch for a long time now too. But the fact is that it's very obvious to me the people that want to make it they're making the commitment to the class the time the money and and learning and then they ask me you know important questions that make me see that this person really has the potential to make it because they they're getting it they're getting the information they're determined to get it and they're serious about making the money and i think that's that's an important part of it too you know there's a there's there's people out there that talk about trading and making money and stuff and they're just not serious about it. Listen, nobody likes taking losses, but you gotta take it seriously when you take losses. And that's why for me, it's so important. And I'm so thoughtful in the trades that I take. I spend a lot of time in the morning. I get up at you know, 5.30, 6 o'clock in the morning and I look at the market as soon as I wake up. I don't spend four hours rating gaps, but I do probably spend at least an hour and a half, maybe two hours looking at the market and my gap picks in the morning for my options and day trades. That's a long time to prepare to trade in the morning. I'm very thoughtful about what I do, and I usually only do one thing a day. I really try to get it right as often as I can because I don't like to lose, I like to win. That is a benefit for people that come and want to trade with me because I personally want to win. And the driving, the motivation, the confidence, the conviction that I personally exude, I think definitely helps people push them to make it. Recently, I had a sale on, on mentoring sessions and I had a couple people sign up for them. The, the things people said back to me after the session was amazing. Just one one hour session after talking to people about their specific problems really helped two of the people that I talked to that I had sessions with already. So it's sometimes it's just that one thing that, should, that just can turn you over. And if you're open to learning, you're open to doing it, you really will get it and, it, and it, and all of a sudden you'll start to make the money, okay? But you have to have a strategy that is the leading point, the leading point to do it, because you're not gonna be successful in the market if what you're doing just simply doesn't work. And at the end of the day, some days anything works. You can do a bad trade and make money sometimes, but that isn't good for your overall morale because if you do that same trade 10 times over and lose, then obviously you're gonna be hurting. So it's the consistency, the consistency, and that's what you have to get. And I and I've really honed that down, quite frankly. Um, any questions here so far? Know why you wanna train? Buy something, full-time job, side-time, retirement? I don't know, whatever your goals are. Like right now, Julio, his goal, he has a, he has a regular job, he's a construction worker. He has re his, his goal is just to get his account over 25,000. That's all he's focused on right now, okay? So have these different goals for yourself to get to that point. And he knows he also doesn't want to do construction for the rest of his life because it's a really hard job. It's physically, physically hard. In fact, he calls me sometimes during the day. I can't even hear him. It's so loud, the construction in the back. And I, and I just scream at him, I can't hear you. I can't hear you. I can't hear anything you're saying. <laughs> and then he ends up, he ends up texting me. But... Um, you know, God love him, he's doing great. And, he, and he's gonna finally do the class uh, this week. But anyways, let's talk about the 26 point checklist. It measures gaps by rating them in the daily chart to find stocks to trade that have, number one, a high probability of directional bias for the entire day, okay? Early confirmation, even if you don't get the move right away, early confirmation of the move. A big move of the day, and the precise entries with follow through and a good risk reward target potential, which is obviously what we all want. Any questions here? Kathy, please put my email in the room. If you want a trial to the room, email me. If you've had several trials already, you gotta tell me you're interested in the class this weekend to come again. Some people have done trial, 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 and they never sign up, I, I don't know why. You know, The room is serious, I'm focused on making money, I want to talk to serious people. You can do this. You're welcome to call me if you have questions. Oh, you did post that. Thank you, Kathy. Anyways, for me, you know, I've been doing this a long time. So for me, 
I'd say most days are easy, although some days I do have hard days too. But I've really gotten so good at reading the market that I think that that has enhanced uh, my own level of trading as well. So you definitely can do this and having a mentor counts. For those of you that are looking at this, this, this trying to break it down point, I'd say four or $500 a day that can average you out to be 100 grand a year. So don't think you can't do it. I think personally, probably everyone that's sitting in this room right now can make four to $500 a day, at least doing my strategy. So you really, really have to chunk it out to a point that you can get, get there, okay? Get there to that point. Anyways, the Golden Gap system is a 26 point professional get bearish gap rating system. That it's a class I do once a, once a month. The bullish class is this weekend, and it is looking at bullish gaps. It depends if you're focused on options or day trades. The purpose of the system is to help you evaluate which gap to trade each morning using a checklist. This checklist tells you what to trade, when, and in what direction. The 26-point checklist predicts directional bias in a stock. Okay, So my system is called the Golden Gap. And I truly believe you only need this one thing to be successful in the market because this is the only thing that I'm doing now for the last 12 years. You can do it for options. You can do it for day trades. You can do it for ETFs. You can do it for stocks. I specifically like stocks and companies, but we do sometimes do the market, as you know. Okay. You do not need a general overall broad-based view, though, to make money. And I really don't use any other fancy indicators either. And tons of people know a lot about the market and they don't do well. I've been on TV with these people and they, they can't call the market right either. In fact, a lot of people that day after we sold off were, were telling people to buy the market on TV. I thought, oh my God, this I'm watching it. I uh, said, this is terrible advice. We sold off hard the second day, then down again too. And then we sold off again. So, I mean, there's just so many people out there that are trading that have no clue what they're doing. So I think what I do is very special. And if you come to me and you do the class, you will, you will see that as well. I think everyone that does my Golden Gap class walks away with a brand new view of how to look at the market. And it's the kind of thing you're just not going to know till you do it. But if you learn how to read institutional money and price patterns and gaps, you really don't need to do anything else. The gap itself tells you a lot. And again, the gap is the difference between the close and the open. Okay. And if your reason for doing this is to make money, you will do well. If you follow my structure and system and then the money management combined, I'm not taking the trade for you. So you have to figure out the sizing yourself, but I'm definitely here to talk to if you have questions. And I call the live trades in the room. I'll say 50 by 80. Okay, so 50 by 80 would be what? First number is the entry, second one's a stop. So that would be what? 30 cents, for example. I don't call the front numbers because everybody should know what stock I'm looking at, CN or BBBY or whatever it is, because I'm usually doing one thing at a time. So the system is called the Golden Gap. Any questions here? I know we're coming into the 5.30. Anyways, the class is, class is called the Golden Gap. So here's the dates. The bullish Golden Gap course is September 19th and 20th. This is the only one I'm doing this year. So if you want to learn the bullish gaps, You'd have to do it in September. I'm not doing this again in 2020. The bearish class is October 3rd and 4th, 9 to 5. Class tuition is $69.99. Class is online. Again, email me if you want to sign up. Now, I was talking about the Gap Options course that Julio's doing. That class is this Thursday, 11 to 3, during the week. This includes one month free of the Gap Options newsletter. Tuition is $2,500 for this half-day class. And then you get one month of the newsletter. Trades are emailed to you, okay? And as far as learning goes, I think it's invaluable to learn what to do. You will trade better. You will have more confidence in yourself, your choices. You can match up in the morning then, learning the gap and rating the gap with me, okay? You say, well, I like this one. I'm going to do this one. And then it comes together. Now, earnings season is almost here. It's in October. And since I... Don't do this class more than once a year. And since most of the options are calls, I'm offering one year of the newsletter free with a bullish class this weekend. This is a fantastic deal. The newsletter for the options newsletter is $69.99. So you're essentially getting that free for one year with the class. You do the class and they get the newsletter free for one year. This is just fantastic. 
I mean, I have had so many huge options calls. Not every trade I call works. Some trades lose. But I have had so many trades that are winners and so many that are huge. Netflix, Google, I mean, there's just so many that this is such a fantastic deal. And I already have people signed up for this weekend. Do not miss out on this opportunity. I don't do this class that often, once a year. And because many of the options newsletters are bullish gaps, I thought this is a good opportunity for people to learn it and then do the options trades. What was the first option? You mean in the webinar? In the webinar, Erwin? I'll go back. I'll go back. You mean at the beginning of the today? Gosh, I don't remember. My assistant put this together for me. Doodly doo. Might have been Netflix. Yeah. It was Netflix. Oh, are you talking about the classes? You lost me. I thought you meant the first trade of the webinar. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, options, options, options. <laughs> I'm thinking of all the things I have on right now. That's hilarious. Uh, you mean choices. You're funny. The bullish classes this weekend. It's it for 2020. You want to learn how to go long bullish gaps? Do the class this weekend and you can get the newsletter for free. You got to sign up by Friday. The bearish class is in October, October 3rd and 4th. And Erwin, you are one of those people. My God, Erwin, you've been following me for eight years. You've been following me almost since I was born. When are you going to sign up? I can't believe you haven't signed up. Erwin, Erwin, Erwin. <laughs> I know. I know. But you've taken 10 other classes and lost money because you told me. And I think some of them you paid the same. I... Listen, you get what you pay for. It's like, uh, here, I'll tell you a story really quick. I, 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 I just bought these shoes. I, I, thought, I, I, I can't buy anything else until I get a bigger apartment. I'll tell you that right now. I'm running out of space in my closets. But I bought these shoes at, I bought these shoes at Nordstrom. They were really pretty online. They were red, they were red suede, okay? And they were so cheap. I said, I have to get these. It was a low heel. And so I bought them. I wore them when I had friends over the one day. And you know what? My feet were killing me afterwards. They were absolutely killing me afterwards. I couldn't, I couldn't, I, got, I was like, I can't actually wear these shoes ever again. And I would never have that in, a, in an expensive shoe. And I said, that's it, I'm done. Like I, did, I bought them not because they were cheap, but because they were, they, they looked pretty. But then when I got them, the way they were put together was like, it wasn't real suede. It was like fake suede or whatever, you know, like that fox faux suede. And I thought to myself, if these were real suede, these shoes, if it was real leather, they would have given and stretched. And my feet were so squished together, like my feet were killing me afterwards. And I had blisters all over my feet. But if they were real leather, they would have cost, you know, four or $500 or more. And I, my wood, my feet wouldn't have been killing me. So it just goes to show you, you get what you pay for. You get what you pay for. You buy cheap shoes, they hurt your feet. Expensive ones, they last forever. So it's the same thing with trading classes. You, you get what you're paying for. You're going to get a good class with me. You're going to learn the information. You get my support as a mentor. And also, in this case here, if you want to do the bullish class this weekend, you get the newsletter for a year. That is a fantastic offer. The option course is a separate class. You, there's no prerequisites for that at all. That is one month on the newsletter and the class. So that is Thursday. You have to sign up for that by Wednesday. Today is Monday. If you're interested in this or the other classes, you have to email me to get the sign up paperwork. This is a good introduction to options. It's a half day class. It's not the whole weekend. And then you get one month in the newsletter to see what you can do with it. So Julio, again, I'm going to Julio is a good example. Julio has already paid for the newsletter through the end of the year. So Julio, before he even, his subscription was even up, and before he even did the class this Thursday, has made so much money in the last few weeks. Um, he signed up to extend his subscription with a student special I did until the end of 2020. So he, he's just a great example of somebody that didn't know anything at all, is a construction worker, is not at his computer at all, 
I mean, half the time he can't even see the chart. He's looking at it on his phone on this app. I mean, he's just a great example of someone that that really I should talk more about because so many people think you need to have this plethora of education and information, uh, you know, back in the stock market and this and that. A lot of times people that have been trading for a long time and have all this information, it inter interferes with their ability to actually make money and they have a lot of bad habits and those bad habits are gonna kill you and kill your account. You come to me with an open mind, you're gonna learn what I know and you're gonna listen to, to what I'm saying, you know? Now let me just look here quickly at the market before I let everybody go here tonight. See if we're doing anything here. No, we're just flat. No, we're just flat here. Actually, we're down a little in the spy. We're down a little in the spy. Flat in Google, flat in Amazon. Let me look at Apple. This is up slightly, but not much. Okay. All right. Not much going on here after hours tonight. Wanted to take a peek. Listen, email me if you have questions. Email me if you want to try out of the room. Erwin, one of these days you're going to join. Maybe it'll be this week. Maybe you'll surprise me. I'll fall off my chair in amazement. And then you're going to join. Then you're going to trade. Then you're going to make money. Then you're going to do a testimonial for me, or better yet, you're gonna get on Skype, and we're gonna do a Skype video, and we're gonna post it on YouTube. I'm gonna say, Erwin, Erwin's been following me for eight years and never signed up, and then he finally did. <laughs> and he started making money. <laughs> I know. Kathy, if you weren't so distracted by your cats, I'd teach you how to trade. You got too many cats and too many husbands, <laughs> too many distractions. <laughs> listen have a great night everyone and please please stay safe out there everybody wherever you are in the world very good <laughs> okay kathy i can teach you math <laughs>